Hi, my name is Leah Day with the Free Motion Quilting Project, and this is Free Motion Quilt Along number 32. This week, we're back on the sewing machine learning more pivoting designs, and you might be kind of getting tired of these designs, but they're so much fun, and they provide such a beautiful texture for your quilts that I really want to share two more with you. This one this week we're going to learn is called Snake Paisley, and don't let the name throw you off. It's an absolutely beautiful stitch, and it's going to create a gorgeous texture for your quilts. So let's get on the machine and see how this works in free motion. Okay, here we're back on Petite Beauty and working on Snake Paisley, and this is another pivoting design, uh, this time with a slightly different rule again. Uh, this one has the rule of a nice wiggly line and come to a sharp point and then uh, form a snake kind of shape with that. And it's again very simple. All we're going to concentrate on doing is just working straight down this place, uh, the space of the quilt. It's just the sashing of the quilt. So I've taken out my pens and of course uh, all of my stitch in the ditch lines are open spaces that I can stitch into if I need to. Uh, work and build off of them. So here we go. And just to remind you about the settings on my machine, how I use my particular machine, I do not drop the feed dogs. Instead, I simply turn the stitch length to zero. On my hands, I'm wearing machinegers, quilting gloves. On the machine itself, underneath the quilt, is this is a queen size supreme slider, but I used to use a regular size when I had a smaller machine. And within the bobbin case, under here, way under here, is a little genie magic bobbin washer. And that is making my bobbin thread glide and slide more smoothly through the machine. So that way I get fewer thread breaks. So that is pretty much everything going on. On Oh yes, um, I'm using Isocord polyester embroidery thread. And uh, using this silky white color. And it is absolutely wonderful for free motion quilting because it's nice and thin and strong and uh, really can handle all this travel stitching we've got right here very, very well. So now let's start Snake Paisley. I'm going to start with just a nice wiggly line. And you might want to slow down as you decide you want to stop to create your point. A good idea would be to stop with your needle in the down position and then really concentrate on changing that direction smoothly to create that nice sharp point. So there is our starting shape, just a nice wiggly snake shape with a sharp point on one end. Well, technically two ends. That's a sharp point on both ends. Alright, now we're just going to pivot and echo. And in this situation, I'm not going to go all the way back. Let me see if I can rotate so you can see. I'm not going to bother to travel stitch all the way back to that starting point simply because it's in a very narrow space. Instead, I'm just going to work off of it, just as though it's pivoting the same way. That's just fine. You don't have to go all the way back to the starting point in certain cases. But you do want it to at least look like you were headed there. <laughs> kind of like that. Alright, now I'm going to work my way off with a new snake. starting point. This time I'm going all the way back and I'm going to pivot and expand that echo as I stitch. Work my way around this shape. And build it up one more time. You know, if you stitch off the ditch, it's not the end of the world. Um, one kind of trick that I do is sometimes if I stitch off the ditch badly, I'll go in there and like this is black thread, I mean sorry, black fabric with white thread. I might go in there with a sharpie marker and color it in. <laughs> uh, I know that's kind of cheap, but it really does work and no one will be able to see that you messed up and you don't have to pick up a seam ripper, which is nice. There we go. Whenever the quilt starts getting in your way, if you can't see or move the quilt properly, you got to get in the mode of pushing it out of your way and stopping and repositioning your hands if you need to. Never hesitate to stop. It's not all pedal to the metal. You have to stop and reposition at times. 
Okay, now again, um, just like we learned last week with Lava Paisley, I could continue to go and fill and finish up this echo, but I've got some empty space right here that I need to go on ahead and take care of, so I'm going to travel back and take care of it first. And it really, it doesn't honestly matter. I could always take care of this later, but that's a space that I know would be really easy to forget about. So I'm just going to go on ahead and get in there and take care of it. And hopefully you can see just how fast these pivoting designs are filling this quilt and how fast this big scale can uh, just eat up the fabric and really fill in nicely and adds a beautiful texture. Uh, you know, our bed quilts, we want to quilt them nice and big and soft so that way they're cuddly and they don't get stiff. Uh, but we also want them to have a beautiful texture so the quilting design has as much of a punch and active role in the quilt as our piecing, our applique design. I never hesitate to change your direction of your St. Paisley shapes. And we were kind of working in a downward fashion, uh, but that doesn't mean that we have to continue to stitch that way uh, only. We can work like I'm working kind of straight across right now. That's fine. You add uh, more of an element of movement to your quilt by coming from all different directions and allowing the shapes to fit and fill together really randomly. So now I've got this space kind of behind the needle. It's a little tricky to see as I stitch into it. That's okay. I'm just going to carefully fill into the space. If I need to do any travel stitching again. That looks good. And again, travel against that block. The one good thing about free motion quilting is that once you get uh, really comfortable with it, you can fill and stitch in the ditch at the same time. So in this situation, this block hasn't been stitched in the ditch yet. So I can go on ahead and take care of that, come all the way around the block, uh, return to this point, and then finish filling the quilt. So that is a really neat tip. You do not have to change to a walking foot in order to stitch in the ditch. That's time consuming. It's also won't allow you to take care of your filling. Uh, it's just not as efficient as just taking care of it all at the same time in free motion. And really the only reason to be afraid of it would be if you hop out of the ditch a lot, but you know, that's the point of learning. You know, you're learning how to stay and keep control. A really good tip, I'm gonna back up just a bit so I connect my stitching in the ditch. Um, but a really good tip was just to keep that um, index finger parallel with the line that you're stitching in the ditch and that will keep it nice and straight and usually in that ditch and hmm, for some reason something something happened to my machine there. Hopefully it'll start up again. There we go. I must have hit the button. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to finish filling and stitching in the ditch around this block. So there you have it. That is Snake Paisley filled over the Batik Beauty quilt. Have fun playing with this design this week. So that's it for this video. I really hope that you'll get on your sewing machine and give Snake Paisley a try. Also make sure to check out the article that corresponds with this video tutorial. That can be found at freemotionproject.com where you'll find photos and uh, more tips on how to quilt it as well as comments where you can ask any questions about this particular design or free motion quilting in general. And then you can also check out our awesome link up where other quilters who've tried these designs are linking up their progress and showing you uh, what they've done. If you have a blog yourself and you would like to blog about your progress, definitely join up with us, link up to the Free Motion Quilting Project, ask any questions you have, and of course spread our love and your love of free motion quilting. Any questions, any comments that you have, post them to the Free Motion Quilting Project and we'll make sure to answer them on Question Thursday posts. Until next time, 
Let's go quilt.